Okay, um, if you haven't already seen the Dragon Ball Super movie trailer, I would highly advise you go watch it. Actually, strike that. I order you to go watch it. Even if you've already seen it, go and watch it again. I am not worth it, trust me. If you have an option between watching that and watching me, go watch that and at least then come back and watch me. Even if you clicked on this video by accident, even if you're like a 45-year-old soccer mom who's living in Eugene, Oregon that's learning how to make a quiche and you just clicked on this video because you don't know how YouTube works, go and watch the Dragon Ball Super movie trailer. Trust me, you will not be disappointing. In fact, can we get some dance music up in here? I hooked up this Bluetooth speaker today. Let's see if it works here. Let's see if we can get something. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah! Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, gotta, gotta collect myself here. Gotta, gotta... Okay. So, this is something that we've known about for a while. This is not anything new. Even before Super ended, we knew there was going to be a movie released by the end of 2018. Um, it's coming out in December of this year in Japan, and there's going to be the dub version, which is coming out the next month in January of 2019. So, let's just dive right in. Um, first things first, Broly! Broly! Okay, listen, back up, okay. I don't, I don't even know where to start this. I'm just so scattershotted right now. Okay. Even if this sucks, it's going to be glorious. Let's just start with that, okay? Because I want you to picture yourself in the theater watching the first Broly movie. The first Broly movie, okay? Broly himself is a shit character in that movie. He has, like, no personality whatsoever. His backstory is absolute garbage. But I want you to imagine yourself in the theater, watching that movie back in like, actually, I think that came out in 93. I think that came out the same year I was born. Okay, but you're not thinking about it that way. You're not sitting there thinking, oh my God, his backstory sucks. You're not sitting there thinking, oh my God, his personality is shit. If you're in the theater watching Broly, the whole, the only thing that you're thinking about is, oh my God, I hope I have insurance because I'm going to have to go to the hospital after I get out of this freaking theater because I think I'm going to have a heart attack because Broly is literally curb stomping all the members of the freaking Dragon Ball universe right before my eyes, okay? So that's all you're thinking, you know, worried about having a heart attack, okay? So just the fact that we all get to sit in a, or at least we all have the opportunity to sit in theater seats and watch Broly, that alone is is worth it. I don't care, okay? But let's think of it this way. They have another chance here. They have a second chance. Actually, they have a third chance because what happened with Kale, okay? So is Broly's character going to be better done this time around? Well, according to Toriyama... <laughs> He uh, basically sat down and watched the old Broly movies. I at least, I don't know if he watched all three of them. I'm actually kind of hoping he didn't. Even if he just watched the first one, let's just stop it there. Okay, because Second Coming and Bio Broly, uh, no, 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 no. Just watch the first one, okay? And he watched the first one and he was like, yeah, that character, yeah, that's pretty interesting. I can rework a few things and maybe make him work, okay? So, so okay, all right, let, let's see where this goes. Um, because here's the thing about Broly, the concept of Broly as the legendary Super Saiyan that was talked about during the Namek Saga and everything like that, that part is cool. The part that that movie really sucked at was setting up, like, a good antagonism between, okay, why is Broly fighting Goku? And in the movie, it was set up like, oh yeah, well, when they were both babies... You know, because Planet Vegeta was obliterated when Goku was a little kid, so you can't really have them growing up in, like, the Saiyan Academy or whatever. Like, if they were, like, you know, typical, you know, shit, like, you know, oh, you know, you're a Saiyan and I'm a Saiyan and we're training to become warriors and I hate you and whatever. They, you can't do that because they were babies when the planet got destroyed and they were separated. So all they could really seem to think of was, oh, yeah, um... Uh, Kakarot, Goku, whatever, he cried a lot in his crib, and that really annoyed Broly. Okay? And just the fact that Broly has very little to his character, it's, it's, it's not much going on here, okay? It's just they really didn't think much about his backstory. They really just wanted to create, let's make a really super muscly character that can just beat the ever-loving shit snot out of um, Goku and Vegeta and the rest of Piccolo, Gohan, Trunks, everybody. 
and uh, let's just do that as a movie. And like I said, yeah, if you're sitting down in the theater watching that firsthand, that shit will blow you away. But in in grand respect, I would rather I would have rather preferred we got something a little better than that, and we have the shot here, um, because we didn't get much of that with Kale. We got we got a little bit more of that with Kale. We got a little bit more of backstory with with Kale and everything. At least the reason why Kale went so She Hulk mad against Goku was because of her relationship with Kalifla. That was at least something a little bit more to go on, like jealousy. You know, rather than just the bullshit, you know, crying in the crib that happened in, in the in the legendary Super Saiyan movie. Okay, so uh, let's look at a few screenshots. First thing I want to bring up is just, and I saw this with the uh, the initial, I think, teaser trailer as well as with just the poster art. The animation in this movie it reminds me a lot of like old DBZ, like. Think of, like, the way the art was at the very tail end of Dragon Ball, the very beginning of DBZ. That's what it reminds me of. Of course, it's just, it's brighter, it's in HD, it's sharper, but that's what it reminds me of, okay? So, it seems to, like, make Goku look a little younger, but Saiyans don't age much anyway, or the aging is different than humans, so I'm fine with that. I love the art style. It's different from Super's art style. In fact, I read a lot of the staff from the One Piece movie Film Z or Film Z are coming back to work on this. So that's pretty cool, all right? So I think in the animation department, there was a few scenes during the trailer that you saw the CG models, kind of the same thing they did in Resurrection of F, and they weren't done all that great in Resurrection of F, but they were only these few scenes in the movie. They didn't detract from it too much. So even if we get a few scenes like that, I'm fine with it. It seems like the animation for the majority of the movie is going to be great. So that's all that really matters in that department there. Um, yeah, so... I, I, let's, let, th this trailer, by the way, knew exactly what it was doing, okay, the trailer literally just, here's Broly, he's back, because one of the first scenes is like, okay, they're walking out of the freaking spaceship, and they're like, oh, it's so mysterious, I wonder who it could be, go Broly, <laughs> like, Paragus just comes out of nowhere, just, go Broly, and then Broly goes, he goes indeed, and then, the trailer just goes all fanboy with it by throwing out, you know, Vegeta versus Broly, Frieza versus Broly, Goku versus Broly. I swear to God, I was waiting for the big text just to pop up in 3D. I would, in 3D, I mean, you know, whatever. Either way, I don't care, but that was what I was expecting because of just how much hype they were building with this. They know the target audience. they like, you know what, you know what, we're not... We're going to spend a little bit of time to build up, like, who is this mysterious Saiyan? A previously unknown character. Broly! And that's all they need to do. Literally, this entire trailer could have just been them shouting Broly, 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 just like uh, Broly himself shouts, you know, Kakarot over and over again. And, yeah, okay, well, whatever, here's here's my money. Have have a good, you know, where's my where's my ticket? I'll pre-order now, okay. Uh, okay, but, but... It's expanding the story, which at least in that part, even if they are going to... I at least hope that because Toriyama watched the first movie, we're not going to get a complete rehash of that. They're at least going to change up his backstory and, and hopefully give him a little bit more of personality. Um, I'm not saying they're going to make him a well-developed character overnight, but they might give him some stuff more to work with. But even if Broly does turn out to be basically a carbon copy of what he was like before, I don't think so. But even if they just, yeah, they just go the entire route that way. It's, yeah, he's the same as he always was, except this time he has darker skin and he has a few new scars, and that's everything. But it's at least going to progress the story. This is one of the very few Dragon Ball movies. I mean, the last two did this as well, but I'm just saying, and overall, out of the many movies we've had, you know, after like the 20-something movies, I think this actually is the 20th movie. After all of that stuff that we've had, this is, uh, you know, only one of the three or so that actually fit into the canon of the actual story, right? Um... So, yeah, it's taking place after the Tournament of Power, and that's going to play an integral role in this. After the Tournament of Power, Goku, of course, stop me if you've heard this one, feels the need to get stronger, but okay. Hey, you know what? At least it's not like a nebulous kind of, I need to get stronger. At least here, there should be a definite goal, and the definite goal is learning how to master Ultra Instinct and call upon it whenever you want. And I'm sorry to say this, I'm going to pull, uh, uh, anyone remember Johnny Carson? Whatever. I'm going to pull out a, you know, a magic uh, spoiler out of my head. Okay. The movie is going to conclude with Goku going Ultra Instinct and beating the shit out of Broly. 
I can guarantee you I will bet money that that is the way it's going to go down, all right? Uh, because at the end of Super, when he was sparring with Vegeta, Goku was like, I know Vegeta, Vegeta was like, why aren't you using Ultra Instinct? And Goku's just, he just nonchalantly says like, oh yeah, funny thing, after the tournament, I just can't seem to do it anymore. So it seems to be, yeah, only when his life is in serious, dire straits, that's when he could pull it out of his ass. So, um... Yeah, I could see that in this movie. Uh, Freeze is back. He's he's revitalizing the Freeze Force once again. We're gonna see the the F Dog back. Uh, Vegeta. There's a funny scene where you know Broly first clashes with Vegeta, and Vegeta's like he kind of smiles like, hmm, that's all he's got. Uh, Broly does have a few new forms. Uh, we got this uh, character design artwork for him. The first one going from the left to the right. Um, the first one really just seems like a battle scarred, you know, like like a, you know his clothing got damaged kind of Broly. Uh, then we have standard Broly. He kind of has this uh, green fur thing around his waist. Then we have this bulked up version, which is, I guess, referred to so far as, like, just yellow-eyed Broly. So this is his bulked up form, probably with that restraint. So in the... Um, in the original movie, in movie 8, you know, Broly the Legendary Super Saiyan, wasn't it like something on his head that was like the thing that Paragus was using to limit his power and restrain him? In this movie, it does seem to be like that bracer around his neck. So this is probably like as strong as he can get while having that bracer. Then there's a regular Super Saiyan form, and then there's the Legendary Super Saiyan form. Okay, so the yellow-eyed form, you have a few more forms, fine. Um... But Vegeta clashes with him, and he's like, hmm, I can take him. And But he's got, like, so much more after that. So much more gas in the tank. Um, yeah, you see Goku going God, and then Blue. So that's pretty standard. We knew that was going to happen. Beerus and Whis are going to be in the movie. So how's that going to go? You know, is Beerus going to get involved here? Because here's the thing. At the end of Tournament of Power, Goku was clearly stronger than a god. So, I don't really know what Beerus' relationship with Goku is going to be at this point. Um, because Goku is going to want Whis to train him some more to teach him more about Ultra Instinct. Beerus, I don't know. I mean, he was showing respect for Goku in that scene where all the gods like stood and respected him for doing what he did. But how is this going to change his relationship with uh, Beerus? Is Beerus going to be like, oh, I don't want you training with, with Goku anymore, Whis, because I'm going to get him stronger than me or whatever. Uh, Beerus could always look at Goku as a potential new recruit for the God of Destruction slot, but that's not really Goku's thing. So Beerus probably would be shit out of luck to even think that. Uh, Vegeta, that's another that's another story there. But yeah, um, I don't know if they're going to play an integral role in this, uh, considering how little of a role they played in, in Resurrection of F. They really didn't play much of a role of anything uh, up until the end when we did the time reversal thing. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't expect a tremendous amount of Beerus and Whis, but they're still in the movie and they're a lot of fun, so I look forward to that. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, so, what was the whole deal? And this is part of the reason why I kind of held off on this for a while, because I didn't really know what the premise of the movie was going to be. And so the first thing I heard about this movie, this was way back when Super was still airing, was uh, we're going back to the original Saiyan. Um, I forget what his name is. It started with a Y. But that was supposed to be like our first look at like the original Saiyan, right? And then, uh, did they cock tease us on that? Was it Because then we found out Broly, and I'm thinking, oh, so we're having the original Saiyan and Broly? Okay, and to a lesser exp extent Paragus, but who gives a shit about Paragus? But like, are we doing both of them? And now we're just, it's all Broly now. It's like, no, Broly, Broly, Broly. I'm like, oh, okay, so I'm, I'm guessing this guy who kind of, this guy just was a fake out or a red herring or whatever, or he is Broly. That might be what they're going with here. Like, no, 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 that's not what they meant, Matt. The first Saiyan was Broly. I'm like, oh, okay, I mean, sure, okay, fine, but okay, well, I, I'm just a little confused on that and where that was going, but... All right, fine, I can roll with that. The original Saiyan was Broly, I don't have a problem with that. Um, you know, there's going to be probably a new backstory on how he survived the destruction of Vegeta and everything like that, and Paragus is still around, so they're probably not going to... They might keep the original, like, the general idea of Vegeta, King Vegeta I'm talking about here, realizing that Broly was a threat and trying to kill him, and he failed, and then when the planet was destroyed, that's when Broly used his power to carry away Paragus. They might keep that part, and that part I was... I was okay with. That wasn't such a big part. Also, something weird. Um, remember from movie 8? I think the first thing Broly did in that entire movie was obliterate the entire southern quadrant of the galaxy. So, uh, 
and it just isn't really referenced again later on in the movie. Like, oh yeah, I have the I'm a galaxy buster. I'm like, oh shit, you know. Um, so we'll see how that goes down. Um, but like I said, I'm I'm pumped to see this movie. In fact, right after seeing the trailer, I texted my friend Phil. I'm like, Phil, dude, we are seeing this shit opening night in January. We're seeing this crap because I've I missed out on Battle of Gods and Resurrection of F. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see those in the theater. I am seeing this fucker in the theater. It is happening. OK, so, yeah. And even if they shit on Barali's character, this is still something that's it's going to be as epic as shit. So let, let me know your thoughts on the trailer below. Let me know how pumped you are. Let me know on how they, how you think they could modify. Like, how would you like them to handle Broly? Okay, because I'm not expecting great Shakespearean writing here. And I don't think that would really fit Broly anyway, if he was this really, really deep, complex character with multiple layers to him. But just a little bit more from what we got with Kale and everything. I think we'll be sitting pretty if we get that. But anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Glad to be back doing the Dragon Ball content. Granted, I'm probably not going to be making much more until the movie actually airs. I, I know Heroes is going on, but haven't really saw that yet. Maybe if I ever check out Heroes, I'll make a video about that or something. But um, anyway, thanks for watching. Signing out! Yeah!